you go home before you have anything to tell us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. We adjourn our meeting. Um, move, move to close. Close. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> Sam is going to join me to do it. Okay. Are you great? Is she ready? We all, one, one second, Sam. We're going to. I'm going to open the public meeting and uh, consider a motion to adjourn the executive session. Uh, Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Taylor, discussion. All in favor? Aye. So, Sam, you're going to come up and do the Pledge of Allegiance with me? And we'll lead everybody up. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The prayer is going to be done by Trustee Dorazi. Um, this evening prayer, when I was gathering my thoughts, I was really thinking about how grateful we should feel to live in a community as um, diverse and as blessed as Dabs Ferry. And considering of uh, the events that happened this morning where both of our schools were on lockdown, I think that we have even a greater reason to feel blessed that we have such an amazing first responders. Uh, thank you to the police department. Um, I really wanna pray to God that keep them safe at every single call that they come out to that they keep our children, our schools, our streets as safe as they can. And overall, we just really hope that somehow the people that they are responsible for making our cities, our schools, um, our country safe, uh, receive the wisdom to be able to make the right decision to continue to keep us safe and to give a bigger sense of safety and security to this generation and the next ones to come. Amen. Um, so we have first up tonight is a presentation by uh, Ms. Nina Orville, the Energy Task Force Chair on Waste Reduction in Dobbs Ferry in 2018 and into the future. And you brought... Yeah. Um, no, no, we'll, we'll do the public hearing. We have a public hearing to adopt the local law to amend Chapter 290-32 of the Village Code to add English Lane as a designated snow emergency street. Any comments? We need to take a motion to open the public hearing. Oh. We'll take a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Taylor, all in favor? Does anybody want to make a comment about English Lane? I guess not, Nina. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nina, let me do it again. We have a presentation by Nina. <laughs> oh, we got to close the public meeting. <laughs> this is what a new mayor goes through. <laughs> I'm going to get it one of these days. I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, close it. Trustee Durazi. Trustee Nell, all in favor? Okay. Now you're going to make it a law, right? Or, uh, I don't think. Well, Darius, what? Darius. Darius had a conflict and didn't okay. need to leave. Mm -hmm. All right, so Nina, I think we're ready for you now. Thanks. I think you have to adopt the You have to law. adopt the local law. Yeah. Yeah. Local law, uh, yeah. 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 So, so we'll make a motion to adopt a local law to add English Lane as a designated snow emergency street to amend chapter 290-32. Okay, I'll second. Trustee Rosillo, Trustee Taylor, all in favor? Okay. All right, this is number four. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, Nina. Right. So I'm I'm absolutely thrilled to see so many 
people come out tonight, and especially the young folks. Yeah. Very important to, yeah. for us all. Um, so we're, we're here to talk tonight about some ideas for how the village of Dobbsbury can reduce the amount of waste that uh, the, the village and its residents generate. And as you know, um, the village has been very active in terms of reducing the amount of energy it uses in municipal operations and re reducing greenhouse gas emissions related to that through all sorts of energy efficiency projects that the village has done, installing solar panels on municipal buildings, etc. And um, the, the village, a number of years ago, had adopted a resolution to commit to reducing um, energy consumption by 20% and dramatically exceeded that, that goal, <clears throat> over 40% for municipal buildings. And so back in 2015, the Sustainability Task Force recommended to uh, the mayor and the board of trustees to adopt a resolution that would be similar for, for waste reduction. And the resolution that, that was unanimously adopted was for a target of reducing waste 20% by 20 <coughs> um, And we felt that, that was important to put it forward, but at the time we didn't have the people on the task force to actually lead the effort. So um, I'm so pleased tonight that we um, have the folks who have spearheaded this um, for the Sustainability Task Force. Elisa Fassman, who you're going to hear from, Ron DeRusso from the task force, and Sarah Salidi, who has been leading these efforts in the schools for a number of years with Great. real success, as you're going to hear about. Terrific. So really all I'm doing um, tonight is introducing Elisa uh, Fassman, who with Sarah and Ron has put together what we think is really an excellent proposal that the Sustainability Task Force uh, really strongly recommends the village move forward with to um, launch us on the same trajectory of success with waste reduction as the village has, has had with energy, energy. reduction. Great. Thanks, Nina. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. Um, so I'm Elisa, a volunteer with the Waste Reduction Committee with others, um, and we are recommending tonight two actions we think the village should take to help reduce waste. Um, firstly, we believe that the village should uh, support the, an investment in recycling bins in public spaces, and that investment should be backed up with an investment in an education campaign to help our residents relearn how to recycle properly, but also reduce, reduce, recycle more of what we consume. So we're gonna tell you about the challenges we've identified, the value we think it'll bring to the village to correct these problems, and then um, some specific actions. Uh, but uh, first we're going to launch our presentation with the help of our keenest observers, um, uh, who have identified the problem and have their own ideas. And um, so I'm going to start with a video that was, uh, uh, these are excerpts produced by Dr. Part's seventh grade science class at the middle school. Ooh, sorry, the audio is not there. Can you hear that? Yeah.
Excellent production. Very good.
given that we con currently contribute about 5,000 tons of solid waste every year um, to the county's uh, uh, combustor, um, reducing by 20 percent, the vehicle on about 1,000 tons, which is about half a pound per resident per day. We believe that with the right systems in place, this is an achievable goal. We can get there. Um, and if we do, we'll save $25,000 per year every year from here on out if we can make this happen. Um, so what we need to do is see this not as a waste problem, in our opinion, but as a resource opportunity. Um, we uh, are therefore supporting this idea of putting more recycling bins in public spaces back up with the education campaign. Why is public space recycling important? Number one, you need to make it easy. If the bins aren't there, the plastic bottles are gonna go in the trash or on the, on the ground, as, we, as, as we've seen. We also need to send a public message. We know that our children and other residents are walking away saying it doesn't matter to the village that we're not recycling. Um, so we need to send that public ma ma message that it does, and this becomes more of a social norm. And finally, as we said, it's the law, as the students kindly pointed out. Um, we, need to, we are supposed to be source separating are recyclable, so it's really what we need to be doing. Liz Vanderzen, who's a Springhurst parent and volunteer, put together this map, which shows um, the where the recy six recycling bins along Main and Cedar currently are. It also shows where trash cans alone are, um, where there is nothing um, in terms of trash or recycling, and we believe there probably should be. And then also the bus stops. Currently, at bus most bus stops do not have either trash or recycling. Buses don't allow food or drink on the bus, so then you end up having a littering problem. So uh, we believe actually that most, if not all, bus stops really should have trash and recycling. Um, but recycling bins are not cheap. We know this. Um, and so therefore, we recommend a phased approach to purchasing. So if the village opts to, for instance, invest in higher quality bins for durability or aesthetic reasons, they can spread the costs out um, over time. Um, we've also uh, included in the proposal a few different scenarios depending on what is feasible, what, what bins you want to move or replace. Um, and we had a great meeting with the uh, village administrator and the Department of Public Works. Um, and uh, so they will be able to decide whatever scenario is going to work best for the village. Um, but we do hope that in the process of investment you keep in mind a number of factors. Number one, we actually strongly believe that consistency is really important. Um, the schools have made great progress in recent years um, in training the children how to recycle, especially at Springhurst and the middle and high school. We, Dr. Brady has been doing a lot of work drawing attention to this issue this year especially. Um, Sarah Salitti and other parent volunteers have worked tirelessly to help train the children. So consistency, the bins actually in the schools are similar to these and they're on the more expensive um, end of the uh, spectrum, but if you combine them with cheaper options, you just think especially in the parks, there should be some consistency. Secondly, um, a lot of uh, recyc I mean, recycling uh, policy research has shown you have to keep a few things in mind. Um, these bins have to be easy to identify as recycling bins, so consistency of color and signage is really important. Um, recycling and trash always should be right next to each other. If you have a trash bin on one end of the park, a recycling bin on the other end of the park, and either one is going to be used correctly. And then finally, the cutout bit, uh, lid is pretty important. So even if you want to repurpose a trash bin to make it a recycling bin, you really need that lid to um, discourage contamination. Um, but putting the recycling bins out alone is not going to make the difference. You really need an education campaign. Recycling policy organizations recommend you devote $2 per resident per year to such a campaign. We're not asking for anything close to that, but we uh, do believe that um, a lot of residents in Dobbsbury don't access some of the cheaper internet and email options that we have, so you need to print out and distribute a flyer, for instance, maybe with more information than this, um, so that people can help manage their waste better. Um, we should also be taking advantage of some um, public event opportunities, <coughs> also signage around town, and these are, this would be a multi-dimensional 
cost-effective campaign, but you really need to hit it from several different um, uh, areas in order to change behavior because it's it's pretty hard to change. Um, and most of all, our campaign is going to rely on the time and efforts of a lot of volunteers that we have who are highly skilled, excited to work on this project um, and this initiative. And these are some of the ideas we have. Um, we want to help engage youth. Um, we've heard their strong and passionate voices. We want to help them participate in some of the outreach efforts. We want to train sports teams to get some of those plastic bottles after the games into the right bin. Um, we have quite a few ideas to support the village in this initiative. Um, most of all, we would seek the board's uh, support in word and spirit. Um, one of the most cost-effective and effective ways to change behavior is enforcement. Um, so for instance, if the Department of Public Works staff puts oop stickers on the recycling bins to alert somebody when they haven't sorted properly, or even more effective, leaves the trash on the corner when they don't do it right, that gets the message off uh, across very quickly. <laughs> what we would um, do is obviously precede such an enforcement effort with some of this village-wide communication, which um, we have recommended. Um, so in doing this, and taking this initiative, we're joining many neighboring areas in Westchester County who are making a greater effort to reduce waste. We want to say thank you for your time. We look forward to working with you to help reduce waste, save money, and make this community a, the beautiful place that we love. Okay, Melissa, thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Uh, great presentation, and I'm fully, I mean, we're, I think, fully supportive of it. I know our staff has worked closely with you. Uh, Charlene, our village administrator. I think Kendra is in the back there, right? Kendra Garrison? She's hiding back there. Kendra, stand up so everybody can. <laughs> Kendra Garrison and Jennifer. I think Jennifer, the voice. Can you say hello, voice. Jennifer? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve. And Steve Treza is, is not here tonight, but he's the head of the DPW. Mm -hmm. But I think you've raised a very important issue. And I know the board, we have met with the county and um, with the town about doing this on a, a larger scale. So your efforts are definitely appreciated. and. We have a lot of young folks here that I think will support us in those efforts. I love the letters that they wrote and the interest that they've taken in this, which has been been great. I'm not sure if anybody on the board has any questions. I just uh, want to show Charlene, so what have, what's, what's going on? What's going <laughs> <laughs> um, on? The mayor and the board have talked about the initiative all along, and so the village administration is actually very psyched with these, these young people and we liken it much to the smoking you know when smoking was allowed every place and anything and everybody and now it's not and when you get through with this we're gonna have everyone recycle and thank you so much and the volunteers I meeting with Nina and Lisa and was and and Sarah was just wonderful they have so many ideas. What we're going to do is money in the budget, and it's always a budgetary, I mean, uh, unfortunately for me, it's always budgetary. <laughs> but sitting with Jen and Steve and Kendra, there are monies that could be allocated, monies that we have now that can be allocated in a certain way and sort of preserved in a line so we know what we're working with for the rest of the year. Um, I think that they have, that uh, the um, the group has put together a program that makes sense. Uh, we have to sit down with them and discuss which recycling before we present it to you as to our recommendations, which recycling bins because it's very important. And I've gotten some information from Tarrytown that I need to talk to you about also. Um, and I just want to you know, just share my appreciation for such a hardworking group. Yeah, great. And, and it's really the board and 
and the mayor have been very interested in this from the start. So. Yeah, just very quickly, I, there's a, a lot to admire about the way that uh, you guys have engaged the community and the schools and the way the schools have made the effort to be involved in this. And in addition to following through on it <clears throat> from the point of view of the board, I think it'd be very valuable to work closely with you to continue the engagement as we go step by step so we're not just chucking some bins out there and then people see it when they're in town on a Saturday that we can keep it going in a way that attracts attention and continues the uh, enthusiasm. Thank you guys so much for doing your research because I think that is a huge plus because I know everybody, everybody's always short staff, everybody's always trying their best and for you guys to do research and come up with solutions and present solutions is, is very helpful and gets us much closer to making change happen. So thanks for coming forward with such positive. I think making it a money, stuff. like the money issue was very yeah. interesting when you pointed out how much money can be saved. So mm -hmm. you're doing the right thing and you're saving money. So yeah. I think that's very good. All so. the right things. Right. <laughs> Thank you to so many volunteers. I see so many familiar faces. I see Julie over there. And so many of, uh, actually, uh, friends of mine that my kids have uh, going to school with their kids in kindergarten. So I know how much you guys care and how much time you have put into this. I see you standing all the way back there. Don't, I see you back there. Um, so to see now that Springhurst is coming on board now with the middle school, and it is such a combined and joint effort, so I'm very excited. and you definitely know that you have our full support. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, no, it, and it's great that the kids are doing it because it's, it's almost like a cultural shift. Yeah. You know, it, it's when you start young and you, it's like with smoking with all that other stuff. You start young and you get the, you know, the youngsters involved and they grow up with the proper habits. It's great, so thank you so much. Yeah. You're showing us the way. Thank yeah, by, by, what's your next project? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, uh, coming. Coming. Following this presentation is a presentation on volunteerism yeah. right. within the village. And it's, it's a perfect segue to that. But I want to say uh, to Nina, uh, I think I started around the same time going back about I was on the budget committee and Nina was on the energy task force. Uh, to see the work and the effort that Nina has put in over the years has been absolutely tremendous. Save a tremendous amount. And when you think of sustainability financially for the village, it's volunteerism that helps us get through these budgets year to year. And uh, Nina, you've really been, when I look at the definition of a volunteer, I envision Nina Orville in there. Uh, uh, also, and your team has been a, a great team over the years. And, Thank you all very much, and all the young folks that have come out to support this effort has been great. And I've, we've been up to see the, um, Sarah, the compost pile up in <laughs> Spring House. <laughs> uh, so you're doing, you're doing great work up there. So that's great. Thank you all very much, and uh, we'll look forward to working with you going forward in the future. Thank Thanks, you guys. Kate. Thank you, guys. We have like 15 more items, so if you want to stay, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see the middle school like that. That's Mr. Parker, that's a science teacher. He is fantastic. Thank you, guys. The fact that both the schools are working together. How are you doing? Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Thank you. See, that is the great group. Well, made such. I feel good. There's a lot, they're putting a lot of time and a lot of effort into this. So we have to get those good ones. So, yeah, at least I'm glad that we already have. You know, the idea going. Oh my gosh, they live in us. <laughs> so, our next presentation is. Uh, is Brad back there? Brad's back here, I yeah. think. 
Our next presentation is uh, Brad Scott from the Conservation Advisory Board, and he's going to talk about the Villages Parks Volunteer Program. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> you never take it personally either. So. Drive? You have a thumb thumb drive? Yeah. I have what you made. See. I think we have it in our packets. Mm -hmm. Jen, do you have the uh, We have it. We have it. Yes. I apologize for Liz, will these uh, materials they'll be available on the website? Well, is this presentation on the website as part of the board package or no? Yes. So, <coughs> anyone in the room or elsewhere who wants to see the materials will have them available online. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you inviting me to speak about this initiative. It's great. It's, I stand in front of you, but I actually represent quite a few people who have contributed to this. Jennifer Dorman, who's instrumental in this, Kendra Harris, and Charlene, and Bill Hatko, I never pronounced her last name. Uh, Stephen uh, Treza from DPW, Donna Vassell, Neil D. Pesball, D. D. Pesball as well. So this really does represent the collective work of a lot of people last 12, let's say to 15 months. Um, I'm also acknowledging people I, unfortunately, I'm unable to acknowledge the people who uh, joined us very early uh, with some initiatives with this, uh, Central Park, um, the Central Park Conservancy Institute for Urban Parks. I apologize, I just got off a plane from California, so I'm about three hours. <laughs> so the thrust of this presentation is really to explain an initiative to create a program for volunteers and harnessing the power and the passion of the people who live in our community, specifically for the maintenance of our parks and our open spaces. The overall mission, as we've defined it, is really to bridge the gap between the village of Dobbs Dob Dob Ferry and its residents. With the with help of volunteers, we'd like to make Dobbs Ferry an even better place to live. It's essentially taking care of what we love, as the city, the open spaces, and the parks that we all enjoy. So just a quick overview of the situation. The village currently maintains over 100 acres of parks and open spaces. It's quite a bit, especially when you consider we're just north of New York City. There are presently three full-time park staff and one full-time recreation staff that manage and provide programs for the parks. So think about that, 100 acres, and we have essentially three full-time on top of other duties, as well as one recreational director. So it's uh, stating the obvious, but it's a lot of work for very few people. But the good news is, is we have numerous volunteer and special interest groups that are excited and vocal about volunteering, specifically for initiatives that are related to park maintenance, as well as some special interest groups that really to the open spaces that we all enjoy, and that actually makes our town so what we'd really like to do is leverage the latter and all of the enthusiasm and wherewithal that they bring in a very organized and direct way so that we can really close the gap between what our village staff has to do and what the really what the overall requirements of the open space and the parks are. So that's what this is really set up to do. Unfortunately, right now there's currently not any formal system for doing that. So we want to make sure that we can close that gap. So really, what it boils down to is the power of what we call compounded interest, right? So remember your little charts, the thousand dollars in when you're, say, three years old, and a hundred years later, you've got a million dollars. Using hyperbole. That's the power of compounded interest. The power of compounded interest here is the interest of the village, the 
interest of our volunteers and the interest of the residents coming together. One plus one plus one isn't three, but it's actually a multiplier of six or So that's really what we're trying to turn now. So what we want to do is we want to basically uh, have a uh, shared understanding of maintenance program and schedules. But first and foremost, what we needed because of the gap here is that the volunteers are understanding of what the maintenance schedules are in each one of the areas. And that we also have an understanding of what's happening and what's happening here. It's this training that's what is going to lead to people working together and really getting that multiplier effect. effect. We want to really be focused on collaborative efforts collaborative efforts that support the interests of the village in the interests of this group. So what's really important here is to understand that there are things that have to actually get done by the village on a very specific schedule that have to actually complement these interests of special groups. And together, we can basically achieve what the village needs, but also what the residents and the volunteers need. centralized area to coordinate the efforts because the last thing that you want to do is put 20 people in one direction and have something that's sitting off to the right and completely neglected. And the only way to really achieve that is through a single point of organization that is understanding of what's happening, who's where, and how the efforts and volunteers are being um, deployed. And, most, and also, all of that really is to create a formal and sustainable program for the individual volunteer groups and really to execute social projects as we need it. So that's really the power of the economy. Next page. Those are the following ones. So we didn't just come up with this sitting behind our desks or sitting inside the, our offices. Uh, we actually consulted with the Central Park Conservancy Institute for Urban Parks and the Dobbs Area Conservation Advisory Board. Uh, the CPC actually generated a report for us after doing a walk through some of the volunteer groups that pointed out that we, we really do have the expertise for the maintenance, but what's missing is really a centralized clearinghouse to maximize the effort and effect of the people who so generously volunteer their time as well as the um, on top of that, um, the city, the village employees who I already talked about, they painstakingly cataloged all the maintenance activities for each park in each open space, which is pretty fantastic when you think about it. So it's everything from the obvious, we need to lead all the way down to like very specific things. Not only did they do that, but they also then put that in, they actually cataloged the schedule in which they So there are certain things that happen in the spring, there are certain things that happen in the summer certain things that happen, happen in the fall, but there's a giant list of everything that needed to be done. Based on that list then, um, the group, uh, primarily the, the village team, developed two tiers of volunteer engagement. So what you realize very quickly from this list is that there are things that just have to be done by the village, and there's things that can very effectively with, with training be done by the volunteers. Um, so they developed two tiers of volunteer engagement. So what we're proposing are cleanup days. So these are going to be pre-scheduled events. Anybody guess when you think the first one might be? <laughs> and, and what is that? Why is that day? Earth Day. Earth Day. So what better way to kick this off than on Earth Day here? And that'll actually be uh, a one-day commitment. So it'll be easy for individual groups to engage and uh, we're looking to have five of, the, five of those throughout the year. And I know that the village is actually starting to reach out to the schools, to the, uh, to the volunteer groups, the Boy Scouts. It's, it's, a, it's a usual suspect. <laughs> and then what's a little bit different is that there's going to be an opportunity to uh, propose a special project. So one of the things that we often see with volunteer groups is that there are, there are projects that people are very passionate about. It's usually because it affects them directly. It's either adjacent to where they live or something that they use daily. And they really want to be able to focus in on that. The challenge with that, however, though, is very easy to want to do that for a couple of months. It gets very difficult on some of these extended projects when it goes into a year or two years to completion. I do it myself. I start to exercise. I do it for about two weeks. 
and then all of a sudden I stop exercising. As you can tell, it's just because this is work. But that's the same thing that we have with volunteer programs. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we come up with a way to be able to have people propose these special projects, but then work with the village to be able to maintain and sustain them over time so that they don't actually become hindrances instead of being helpful. So that's actually going to be a second tier, which will be a formal proposal uh, process that will be managed uh, through the village as well. So with that said, and I'm going to save you some of the uh, some of the interpretive components of this that you can download online. Uh, what we've also included in the package is essentially the outreach program that we put together for recruitment for the first year of that, which is going to be um, on Earth Day. So it goes through the goals for the actively promoting and recruiting and training effective volunteers. So this is something that is sustainable. Foster and build relationships with the community and nonprofit partners. Keep our beautiful parks clean and coordinate maintenance and improve efforts of volunteers. So the Village of Dobbs Ferry is looking for volunteers and groups to help us keep our beautiful parks the way we like them. And it's basically you take care of what you want, with what you want. So as we said, the inaugural kickoff of this is going to be great to share. So what we're asking for from everybody from the community and from the Board of Trustees is really your support on this initiative to uh, provide any approvals that we may need to be able to activate the volunteers and close the gap between that which the village maintains and the volunteers can so effectively continue to build on and really support and implement the plan on an ongoing basis because this isn't just Earth Day. This is something that is going to be put together for a long haul and for something. So five years from now, like the success of the Energy Commission and the Commission to allow we really came up with an amazing volunteer program that could potentially be a model for other cities as well. And most importantly, we look to all of you to help recruit the people that are going to be able to help Brad, thank you very much. Um, you know, when you when you talk about you know people volunteering, and I, I mentioned it to Paula McCarthy, who's the head of our nominating committee, and Trustee Nellis and liaison there, uh, that we will be looking for people for this type of project. And if, I think, in fact, five people have come in that um, that have already applied for either the beautification or one of the other things that you're planning to do. But um, I think this is really wonderful for the village. My first love in volunteering was the nominating committee. And um, I think it's, it's great that people are willing to help out and uh, make the village look cleaner, you know, make it a safer place, make it attractive. The quality of life um, is, is going to be greatly improved because of this. So thank you for your efforts. Great job. Yeah, thanks, Brad, because uh, I know how much work you put into this. And um, again, this, you know, this came out from the CAB when we were talking about parks and how do we keep them clean and how do we keep them up and how do we maintain the trees. And um, th there's a lot of, uh, even in addition to just cleaning, it's a question of planting stuff, of maintaining stuff, of caring for the trees, for the flowers, <coughs> for the, for the uh, lawns, etc. Um, and um, last week, last uh, meeting, we uh, appointed a tree consortium. And in that consortium, there's a bunch of groups, the beautification, the um, garden committee, the CAB, the waterfront park. So that's a great resource for people. And the idea is to tap into all this talent that we have. And all these people are working. They're already, we need more volunteers, yes. But we also have groups that work already and to coordinate these people and coordinate the work so that things that need to be done can get done, get done in a good way. And it's fun, it's social. You're gonna be out in the parks, come on. <laughs> you know, summertime. Um, it's, have we set up a way to set the um, um, application form? Yeah, I'm gonna default to Kendra and Jennifer on that. I, I would, I would say, would it be most appropriate for which At this point, we were at, we wanted to present it to you. Brad mm -hmm. was nice enough to present it. We've discussed this in 
in depth, actually. We have the applications. It just needs your approval to start sending them out. And Kendra, Jen, and Steve have been working to get groups together so that they will just send it out, ask for the volunteers, and start up the two days that we have settled. It's uh, at, uh, April 22nd and May 19th, I believe, that uh, we have uh, two arranged dates. Uh, so once you say okay to us, we're ready to go. Do we do that now, or do we have to put that on the next agenda? I, I do don't think. I think it's just a very informal okay. yeah. uh, okay. requirement to just say, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. <laughs> sounds like a great sounds idea. Sounds like a good idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> and, and, and I would really like to ta uh, thank Brad. I mean, he's worked with Jen, Kendra, and Steve very closely. Um, and has been very supportive of their thoughts and their, actually, their enthusiasm for this pro program. Thank you so much, Brad. Thanks well, very I think it's. Uh, this is the culmination of a lot of people's efforts, and it wouldn't have happened without the support of Jeff and Kendra and Steve and Brad. Um, and it's been a huge success. So people are going to submit a volunteer application, and then who? They go through probably Kendra. Okay. Um, I mean, we have the uh, the nominating committee form out on line, right? Th this is would this be, this be different? Different. This this would be just for a day okay. application. It wouldn't be something that they would have oh, to go through nominating. Okay. It would be like the Boy Scouts would sign up their troop, you know, right. something mm -hmm. like that. So is everybody here on the team, Brett, that's sitting um, here? Jennifer? No, we're not in the audience. We know Jennifer's. Who's in the audience? Did they sign up? Come on, guys. It's not that Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I just wanted to say that to her voice. Very good. Thank you very much, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate it. Okay, so now we have courtesy of the floor. Would anybody like to make any comments? Anybody would like to address the board? Oh, that's a nice question. Hmm. No one? No? Okay. Great. <laughs> Get a break this week. <laughs> Stay seated, Pat. <laughs> okay. Consider a motion to appoint Mr. Neil D. Pasquale as a member of the Conservation Advisory Board for a term of three years. And I see Neil is sitting here. How are you, Neil? And Neil has been on the, the yeah, board yeah. for many years. It was reappointed. It's a reappointment and uh, has been the chair. And thank you very much for all of your efforts on the CAB. Uh, can I have a motion? Uh, Trustee Cassell, second. Trustee Nell. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous? Thank you, Neil. Do you want to say a word or you're good? Okay. Consider a motion to appoint Mr. Barry Sherman as the chairman of the Youth Services Council for a term of three years. Do you have a motion? Trustee Kiss. Trustee Moore. Uh, Trustee <laughs> Trustee Moore, that sounded good. <laughs> Trustee Cassell. Discussion. So we just, he's already on the Service yes. Council and we're just going to make him the chair? Is that what's happening? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Consider a motion to authorize the village administrator to sign an agreement with Ms. Edna Santizo, Dobbs Ferry Youth Services Coalition Coordinator, for an amount not to exceed $30,030. Um, and I think this is subject to the insurance. It's subject to submittal of insurance, insurance. as required in the agreement. Okay. Um, motion, Trustee Dell. Second, Trustee DeRozzi. Discussion? So we're going to approve this contract as we have it, subject as you said. Subject to submittal of proof of insurance as required by the agreement. Okay. okay. All in favor? <coughs> Uh, but let me let me just say something real quick. Um, I just want to say that um, just a quick recap that um, Barry is actually taking the chair of Miss Lisa Bai. As you all know, Lisa was the chair of the Youth Council, um, who did an amazing job, 
and has left a very uh, a strong legacy with the council. Edna is joining the team, and they are very excited about new ideas and encourage the community to please get involved. So I am the liaison to the youth council and would love to get more youth um, involved, more volunteers to come and join our team. Uh, but I really want to thank Lisa for her service during the time that she was the chair of the Youth Council, Justin um, also, Kincaid is one of the members. Um, so we just, you know, ready for a new star, and Edna and um, Mr. Barry has been uh, great coming on board, so I'm very much looking forward to working with them. You know, uh, I'm glad you mentioned Lisa Bry. She did take that um, committee over at a time when it really needed some uh, new life and enthusiasm and really did a great job with it and you know, started the holiday hustle and some other things there. So she really did a wonderful job for the village and we thank her uh, for her service. Consider a motion to approve a request from Mr. Barry Sherman, Youth Services Council, to set the date for the 2018 holiday hustle on December 9th, 2018. I have a motion. Trustee Durazzi, a second. Trustee Cassell. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Consider an application to legalize the fifth dwelling unit at 364 <coughs> Ashford Avenue. Motion? Maybe, maybe, no, no, no. maybe Ed could get, Ed fill us in on that. Ed, why don't you come up and fill us in on that? Has he brought the fifth unit up to code? Not yet. So he hasn't done anything yet. And then under building permits, he would bring it up to code. And there's no, is there parking for the fifth unit? There is no parking available on that lot at all. So the existing units have been using the lot next door with to the east. The prior owner, the same thing, and now it's still all the three lots are owned by the same person today. So, but it's a separate lot. So, the, so they're parking on a lot that doesn't belong to the house. So it's not, there's not now a way to legally add parking. So if it was legal for four, and so that doesn't change. So it doesn't require the parking because it was grandfathered in before the zone change but any additional to 
to the uh, already valid CL would require two parking spaces. But we don't know what's happening on that lot next to the house. Correct. Has there been a proposal made before the planning board? A formal proposal made? There has been. There's ideas that have been around, but so, there's no, nothing set in stone yet. So that's what I'm hoping that Mr. Steinstein would present to you so that we know how to move forward. Patty, do you have something that will be presented yeah, to us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Don't go too far, Ed. <laughs> First, I don't disagree with anything that Ed just said. I think he's got this good. Um, the challenge here is horse and cart. Um, we've been working on this with this property owner for a while now, trying to find a way to do a combination of things, one of which, very important one, is to set this up so that the right thing that the village would like to see with this property can happen. Um, when this first came before this board, I was not involved. I think that was three, three years ago, two or three years ago. The applicant came in and showed a very, very large project. And when there were questions that were asked about how you could do this with these multiple curb cuts onto Ashford, the applicant figured out, well, the way I can solve this is I can come in from Allen Street. Now, I don't know if this board would ever do that. It's not my job to determine that. I don't think that's a good idea. We had conversations with the applicant. Um, we, I don't want to say we convinced the applicant of something, but we, we, we laid something out that made, we thought more sense, which is that he had value as a single family lot in a single family zone, and that's already been accomplished. That subdivision has now been completed. Applications are pending on all of the properties. The step that we're kind of getting up to, we haven't quite gotten there, but I think we'll be there maybe Thursday, is moving forward with site plan on the 26 Allen Street parcel for discussion so that can be approved for the single family house to then be approved, which might be the next month or two. And initiating the discussions about what will happen with not only the 364 front on Ashford, but the other two lots. The village attorney was very concerned about exactly what we were talking about a minute ago with the fact that the parking is used for the house is technically on a separate parcel. Now the fact that these have been owned by the same party for such a long time has meant that it's not an issue. There is parking, this is where the people who live in the house park. Um, but one of the concerns that came up I think during the site plan reviews was <coughs> what happens if now all of a sudden the guy decides I'm gonna sell 364 without any parking. So what we've proposed to the board Dwight Douglas, your village planner, um, I think support this, is the consolidation of all of those three lots into one parcel. At which point you'll have the remarkable situation of having a house with people living in it on a piece of property with a parking lot where they park all in one thing. Now, if the owner would like to stop at that point, he can. There's no harm done at that point. If he wants to continue with the process, he can coming before the planning board and then eventually back to you. The issue with the fifth unit comes up. Ed, you know, Ed, Ed runs a much tighter ship than we have experienced, uh, say, 10 or 20 years ago, with good reasons. And one of the things that he doesn't want to see is these kinds of issues slip through the cracks, where all of a sudden you've got a unit that was, whether it was legally created, illegally created, it's not consistent with what the village's records currently show. He would like it so that it is consistent with the village records, and he would like that it is, well, not like, that's a nice word for me to use. He's requiring that it be brought up to code. Um, for it to be brought up to code, it should have a third, the third floor should be sprinklered. But we're in a position where we can't get the permit to install that sprinkler system because we've got a building that's not compliant with the five units in it. So at this point, um, it's very clear on the record that the parking is available for this house. Nothing's going to change on that. We can make some kind of a short-term agreement if this board <coughs> feels that's necessary to guarantee that there's nothing that happens in the interim. But the main thing, I think, is to get it moving through the planning board's process. So all of that thing can be, you know, everything can be consolidated at which point it becomes a non-issue. Just for the record on how this became, went from being four to being five or six at one point. I'm not sure where the six came in, so I'll just stick to the five. 
there was for a long time a retail use on the ground floor with an apartment. So it was the person, I think, who owned the building had his own business there, and he had a place where he lived. Above that, there were three apartments, two on the second floor, one on the third floor. At some point, I don't know when it was, people tell me that the two apartments were there back in the, in the 90s on the ground floor, but the retail left and it became five apartments. At some point, somehow, magically, a sixth apartment appeared. That has been moved to the satisfaction of the building department. So I think the goal here is to get it where this is. The, the DT zone does not limit the number of residential units. So there's no waiver, there's no consideration you're giving. The property is sufficient to support this. The existing building is there. If you guys decided to approve the fifth unit, the property owner would then be obligated to bring it up to code to be able to do so. And the planning board could move forward with this and do whatever they're going to recommend for you to then act upon, hopefully soon. But it was the landlord that created this fifth and sixth apartment in, I, illegally? I, I'm not in a position to say who did it. Okay, but it's I, been I done. I know that I did <laughs> Right. So my, my personal feeling is that we should wait to see what the whole picture looks like before we start approving things piecemeal. So, I mean, that's how I feel about it. I know we haven't even made the motion yet, but that's how I would approach it. So. And you're not, you're not approving something piecemeal. What you're doing is you're, you're giving the village the right to move forward with it in a safe condition. So No, right. we're allowing five apartments without on one lot without for, parking. The, 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 no, they have, the, there's parking right now. But now. it's not, not legal, legal, Patty. It's not. It's not the same property it as the unit. Which the village of Doms Ferry Code allows. Doms Ferry's zoning ordinance permits you to have parking on adjacent properties. No reason you can't do that. Shared parking agreements and, and under a site plan. Right. This is a legalization of a little park. Right. So if the, plan, if the planning board wanted to, Thursday night when this is being heard, we like Right, but that's, that's, that's after what we would be doing. So, I mean, that's sort of like a piecemeal type thing. You got a thing, Sean? I think the, yes, thank you. Um, I think the real issue here is the board makes the ultimate determination. And what has happened in the past is that it has gone to the planning board for recommendation of what? And there's no, like, there's nothing there. And I think that this board, especially in this case with 364, where it has the possibility of a very large development and a five-unit house, which is not legal and doesn't have that parking for the fifth um, unit, uh, would present a challenge for the planning board without any direction from this board, who are the ultimate arbiters of what goes on. So I believe from what I've gathered in listening to this that first of all, I think there's a question is why the fifth unit is needed. Secondly, the fifth unit would need parking, thus requiring the consolidation of all the uh, lots because it is not, we don't have a merger law from what my reading of it. Um, so we need a consolidation and, you know, the parking, but then the board is not aware of what else is going to be proposed. And I think that really becomes the issue. Well, I don't, I mean, what if no one ever proposed anything else with the property? Why would that be a problem? Well, one, if, if, if you say, well, we're not going to do anything else, well, and then, <clears throat> then, then we will entertain the, the, the fifth unit. But if, if something else is being proposed, and this is not like a, you know, a, a light in somebody's eye, this has been an issue for a while now of different proposals for that property. So it's not something that is, you know, oh, it'll never happen. No, I, I think it will happen. I think it should happen. Yeah. But um, I know approval processes On, on 360, you know, there won't be any, unless, unless the board advances it to a referral to the planning board, there's not going to be a pre-submission. Well, that, I think, has already been done. Well. That was when, when, we, went, when we were referring to that subdivision. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's been a referral. To the possibility of a 
possibilities. There was no application to the planning board for there, anything but the subdivision. No, we made applications for both subdivision and site plan simultaneously. The site plan was put on hold because the village decided but, they wanted to Okay, but the site done? plan has to be referred by the board. It, we came before you and we were referred to the planning board for the discussion of 364 after that. That's, that's what we did. For the site plan? Subdivision does not get referred. Right, but the so site plan does. The way we got referred. I, I, I disagree, but this is not the time to. May, may I, um, Patty, just a quick question. Is there anything that can be presented to us um, for a visual, something that is not just, and also we're reasoning about this fifth um, addition to this project? The, there's nothing that would need to be presented to you for the existing building, which is in the same status as it's been for maybe 50, 60 years. But it has been illegally, right? Because it is made to be At four. At point, which we think was around 1994 to 1996, the person sold the building, who had owned the commercial space where he lived, and the new owner of the building eliminated yeah. the commercial space. But, but so then they should have. Be required. Yes, and it was never taken out. So right. 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 And there's no. It doesn't matter if it was there. Patty, you already have something at the planning board. We've been now at the planning board on this for. I thought I didn't think the. I remember the. I, I may be wrong. The the. the that was about the subdivision because the planning board was pretty specific about they didn't want to get into the site plan on 364 until the subdivision was complete because they didn't right. want to mix. So the stuff. subdivision is there as before it. The subdivision's been done. Okay. Now we're for site plan for 26 Allen Street, the, por the portion of the property that was subdivided off for the one family house. Wait. The, I made it a point at the planning board every time this was here that we were only looking at the subdivision only looking at the subdivision there was no site plan for the other lots i think because that Patty, we, we really need to see what what are the ultimate goals of this correct me if owner. i'm wrong but have we not been held up from going that direction because there's a violation of the house? right so you have to that. get rid of the fifth right. apartment <laughs> Is anybody occupying that apartment? Yes. Illegally. <laughs> with no sprinklers. Right. Patty, you are so good with presentations. <laughs> Why don't you put something together that you can give us a visual of what is it that we are going to be considering to approve? Even. Are you talking about what the eventual okay. development of the parcels will be? No. What is it that you are asking us to approve now, which is what is on the agenda right now? What your vision is. What your vision is. I mean, there's got to be some options. I, I, one, one of the other issues is there's no guarantee for the parking. So if you could combine the lots now. We, are, we have been trying to do that. But let's say, Pat, Patty, let's say he sells that lot, right? And he, re, and he retains the house with five units. There's no parking. How many months ago was it that I asked the planning board to, to do the consolidation and I was told they did not want to do right. that? That has to come here first. That's why we're here today. Ha so this board can say, I want you to consolidate, or what I think this board is saying is that we'd like a consolidation, but we'd like to see the whole end game here and, and so that we know. I, Patty, I, I think that you need to give us the, what you have at the the site plan that you have at the planning board because it doesn't really belong there. And also, does that plan uh, mean that the house is going to be torn down? You guys are getting to the point that are two or three or maybe five steps down the road. No, Patty, the, the, there Wait. is a site plan at the planning board for this property. Is there not? No. 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 There's no. nothing. No, it's two, pro two, two options proposed that are not an application Well. They, Okay, so they should come here. So, so I think the board deserves to see what you what the two plans were. And it, well, no, I don't I don't know that there's any plan that for the parcels on Ashley at this point that's what's proceeding. There was something we talked about a year ago, which kept the existing house and had another building with five units in it. But my understanding is the advice so far that we've gotten from the discussions with the planning board is that they would prefer to see one structure 
That comes to us. Why is any of that happening yeah. with the planning? That, that is, that is, yes, no, we we let them. Well, we, I we think yeah, I think that. we need to move forward. And I just had one one observation is Patty. That there's no basis that I can see for this board to approve or legalize a fifth unit that doesn't have parking in the midst of a, 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 an evolving development situation. So you, you've got to solve some of those pieces, be that creating permanent parking that would allow us to consider, consider it, and that, that wouldn't necessarily be the only reason. Because again, there, there are concerns, I think, I don't want to speak for everyone else on the dais, about the idea of, after the fact, legalizing things that have been done on a willful basis uh, that were originally, uh, you know, a violation of the code. Um, but in any case, without the parking, it doesn't make any sense. You've got an existing parking lot. No. The, 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 no, the, the next door, the, the lot next door has an existing parking lot, Patty. The, the lot next door is a parking lot that is there for the use of this property. What if is he sells writing? that lot? I mean, then it, that's a, that's, one that's a problem. Which is and that's what I think the board is getting to here. Now, how do we get it consolidated? How do we get one? How do we get those three lots? And that's, I think that's what we're looking for is what is the plan? What are the plans? I think, I think the way you do that is you, um, whether this board wants to take on subdivision, which I don't believe you're allowed to do in your state, um, the subdivision laws are very clear that you can only do the subdivision laws are only the planning board, not the board, not the board of trustees. If the, board, if the planning board were to approve the flat map, which has been filed and submitted to them, for those three parcels being consolidated into one, you would have the house with the parking on one piece of property. It's our recommendation that that be done. Patty, I, I think you can consolidate parcels without the planning board. That's not yeah. without the planning board. Well, without the planning board. You just can consolidate them. You can merge, you can merge plots. I think this is some. There, there, there are issues here that are going to have to be dealt with, discussed we with the village attorney at more uh, length yeah. to sort anyway, out the right way to go. Yeah, here. We're not going to solve this tonight. I think we're all concerned about. Okay, well, we're on the agenda for Thursday night's meeting. Okay. Um, if for consolidation. No, no, for the subdivision. Oh, for the house. That's a separate. That's, that's a separate. separate. That's that's separate. Yeah, that's totally separate. separate. Right. right, so then that's not related. And not in the D, it's not in the DT. It's zone, not in the right? DT, no. no. Yeah. So if there's a way that the properties can be consolidated without subdivision, I, I, I think that I think you're just parsing this out. What the board has said is that they want to see your plan for that parcel before they entertain anything. And one of the issues that you are going to have to look at for the whole, anything you do, is the consolidation of those parcels. Right. Okay. I agree with that, but for this matter to be considered, we are told we, have, we can't have an illegal apartment. Right. And, but so but if, 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 we have, if you want us to decide. This board <laughs> can say we will hold off and stay the legalization of that apartment until after the consolidation, then we'll look at the whole project. That'd be fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because if you're asking the us to make a decision. No. I mean, what I'm saying is this. No. We're not going to approve. I don't think we're in, uh, we would approve an application for an illegal fifth department tonight. I don't think anyone would have no. the adequate. No. So if that's, what, if, right, so <laughs> no. if that's what they're asking us to do today, and we decide we're not, I think we'll take a vote on yeah. it. I don't think I, I, yeah, I think, I think we need to table this until we have a better feel for it. Uh, yeah, I'm not uncomfortable tabling it. And I, yeah, I, and, and certainly not comfortable. I would not approve it. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think we need a lot more information before. At, at this point, we should put some kind of timetable on it because you have a violation hanging out yeah, there. So you don't really want to table it for any yeah. length of time. Uh, I, I think that I, Patty has to go to his client and ask what he intends on doing. Because, you know, there's always a possibility of, of not having that fifth apartment, obviously. And then all this goes away. So I think he would have to talk to his client to find out which way he wants to go. I think he's heard what you have Because the two things are you get rid of the fifth apartment or you, well, you show us lots. how you have parking. We merge the lots. Right. Parking oh, and what can solid the lots. If we can, I, I, I'm not an attorney, so I'm not 
trying to pretend I'm not. The, my understanding from what I was told was that I could not merge the lots until we got rid of the illegal part. If we can merge the lots, that makes the part that we should go away. At that point, it becomes a matter of uh, well, we'll take we'll take a look at that. We'll have to have the attorney yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, Patty. We yeah. So I'll be tabling it for a particular. Time. I I, I, ju I just think it should be adjourned in, in two weeks so that he so Patty comes sure. back right. with whatever okay. issues. I don't think we have to vote on that. No. Right? No. no. And if you want a presentation on this, we can do that. Why don't you talk to your client, talk to the building official, and then we'll decide how, yeah. how we move forward after consultation with the mayor and the board. Thanks, Patty. Great. Thanks. Okay. Consider a motion to approve audits number three, number four, and number five for February 2018 as recommended by the village treasurer. Motion. Uh, trustee. Uh, so Zillow. <laughs> Second. Trustee Taylor. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Consider a motion to schedule a 2018-19 budget workshop. Motion. Trustee we'll Nell. Second. Do we want to, are we picking a date? Yeah, yeah, yeah. March. Well, I think we have a date. March 21st, I, I believe. March 21st. Yeah. Do we have a time? At 6.30. March 21st, 7 o'clock? 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. And these are, uh, these are public meetings? Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, important that if uh, anyone who's out there listening uh, in the audience is interested in the process and the budget, mm -hmm. uh, they could make plans to attend on the evening of the 21st yeah, here at Village Hall. They're not Hall. participating. But they, they wouldn't be participating, but they'd be able to listen yeah. and yes. hear what's going on and learn more detail <clears throat> about the budget uh, and see uh, some of the background behind uh, the basic numbers. That's a very good point. Thank you, Trustee Taylor. Consider a motion to schedule in 2008. Oh, wait, we have to vote on that? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just reading it with the oh. date. <laughs> 2018-19 budget workshop, March 21st, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. In Village Hall. Motion in Village Hall. Mm -hmm. Motion, Trustee Nell, second, Trustee Taylor. All in favor? Unanimous. Consider a motion to schedule a public hearing on March 13th, 2018 to amend parking restrictions on Stanley Avenue. What happened there is that on Rivertown's wild construction was going on, we uh, changed the law to have no parking. Now that the construction is finished, we want to change it back to having parking on Stanley Avenue. I mean, basically that's it. Uh, what we're thinking of is having, I think, I believe there's about 19 spaces, and we're, we're going to put, if it's okay with the board, we're going to put the old meters down, and then we have to discuss as to the timing, but we'll discuss it with the chief. That's okay. Okay. Is that what was there before? Meters? No. 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 Okay. Motion. <coughs> Trustee Nell. Second. Trustee Taylor. Yes. Discussion? All in favor? Consider a motion to schedule a public hearing on March 13th, 2018 to amend <coughs> parking restrictions on Hudson Terrace. That is because Hudson Terrace is a very small, I believe it's private, but it does not allow for a fire truck to go through or garbage trucks. Um, I believe there's a letter by the um, fire chief mm -hmm. who states that. Um, I know it is somewhat of an imposition on the um, residents. However, I think fire safety is always First, there is in everybody's mind. Chief about yes. That, so. Great. Well, I guess we can hold the meeting and see how it goes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, can I have a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Cassell, discussion. All in favor? Unanimous. Consider a motion to ratify authorizing the village administrator to enter into a rental agreement with Mercy College for the village of Dobbs Ferry. Steam revolution use. <coughs> it, it, it's a. What is? It, it's a youth group. Oh, okay. Use of the main it's, I hall. I thought it was STEM, but you know. 
think uh, room G10 on February 20th, 2018, February 21st, 2018, and February 22nd, 2018, from 9 to 1 p.m. Motion, Trustee Nell. Sure. Trustee Taylor, second. Mm -hmm. All in favor. So this is for free. It doesn't cost us any money, right? No, no, no. And it, it's already happened. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> Consider we like free. <laughs> <laughs> Consider a motion to authorize the village administrator to sign the no-fee rental agreements with Mercy College for 2018. Yeah, it's because it always ends up that we'd be ratifying it afterwards anyway. So and it's no fee. The only thing that we provide is insurance. And it, these come up periodically, especially without the embassy center. Um, the one thing, and it's not, this is just so we're dotting our I's and crossing T's, is do we want to say something along the lines of similar in terms to the, whatever this last agreement was? Absolutely. Just, just yeah. because, you know, I mean, just to, because the board's responsible for it, and we know you are going to get insurance and make sure that we have all those things done, but uh, I think we should authorize it similar to the terms of this agreement. Absolutely, no problem. Great. Motion. Trustee Durancy, second. Trustee Cassell, all in favor? Consider a motion to authorize the village administrator to sign a proposal from Dolph Rotfeld Engineering PC to assist MS4 communities in the preparation of annual stormwater report for submittal to the New York State DEC for program year 2017-2018 for an amount of $2,500. This is an annual report, and I, I, I sincerely believe it's because there's so many initials. It's the MS4 to do the BMPs, which is the Municipal Stormwaters to do best management practices. Um, and it's a requirement by the DEC. There are innumerable forms to fill out, and what happens is the DPW really does all the best management practices. It's taken together, like they need to be trained, it's taken together, and then it's put on this form um, and sent to the DEC. And I think, I think most, if not all, of the villages use DALP for the same thing. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Shirley. Uh, motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Durazi. All in favor? Unanimous. Consider a motion to authorize the village administrator to sign an agreement with the Metropolitan Transportation Authority to reserve two of the Metro North parking spaces at Waterfront Park for zip car parking. Um, as you know, uh, 25 spaces are um, reserved for Metro North. They, they, they lease the 25 spaces. And we use them, and they, actually they, they were um, leased in order to provide parking for non-residents. But it also says in that major agreement, we can put non-residents anywhere we want. It's, so it's just these are the 25 spaces that we use for other things too. Uh, but what it, it is an agreement with Metro North with zip cars, not with us. But they have to enter into an agreement with us to allow that. Zipcar then pays a permit fee. Since it's 24 seven, the permit fee will be higher than a usual permit fee. Non-resident. Hmm? Non-resident. Maybe even a bit more. We're still negotiating it, but it will be no less than the you know non-resident fee. Um, you have the whole package here. It's 24/7. Zipcar, Zipcar. Um, Irvington has it. Hastings has it, and Tarrytown has it. So, is this one of the 20? Or are these two of the 25 spaces? These are two of the 25 spaces. Yes. We could, as a board, designate. Two additional spaces for the weekend parking. Yes, if yeah, we, we chose to do whatever. that. Yeah. And I think this is interesting in terms of also providing a benefit to people in the village who you don't own a car, car. Yes. And, yeah. and might, mm -hmm. you know, be able to walk down to the train and rent a car in their hometown as opposed to having 
to figure out, take a bus to White Plains or deal right. with all of that. Absolutely. Um, so in addition to maybe people coming out of the city, I think it's something residents might, some mm -hmm. residents wouldn't, especially in the downtown, mm -hmm. might another need, otherwise need a car. That uh, could be a good convenience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Sean. We're not approving these signs or anything. I mean, that's not... It's regular signs, and no, you can work with them. Okay. I mean, uh, and, and I asked about that bubble in the, in the middle, and they don't put that up anymore. So. Okay. Uh, I also would have to ask Charlie, what's the term of this agreement? Whenever Metro North, oh, if they don't pay the permit fee, then they're gone. No, I understand, but, but I mean, it, it, is there a term? There is no term. Metro North has no term with zip cards. It's at their left, yeah, at their, you know. But what is the term as far as the village is concerned? Every year it would be, it, right? It's as long as the term of the lease is. Well, what's the term of the lease? <laughs> so I guess we're just Whenever they say that they don't want it anymore. Right. That I, I'm serious. I read the agreement. No, but you're talking about the term of our agreement with Metro. Yeah, I feel like we should be able to get out of this if we wanted to. Mm, we can't no. get out of the other one, and we can't get out of this one. Well, if we didn't want to give them a permit. permit yes, right. you have that. So next year but we could say. You, if you're talking about the 25. Uh, spaces. Oh, the, the, I'm not talking about the 25 spaces. I'm talking about the zip car. So all we're we, doing is giving them a permit. If, yeah. Yeah. If for whatever reason this if wasn't something that worked pay, out for the village, right. we wouldn't have to renew their yes. permit next right. year. Well, we, we wouldn't have to give a permit. Okay. That's fine. Very good. The agreement goes on, but the permit is what the, what's needed by a zip car. Right. Okay. Do we have a motion? Trustee Vizella. Second. Trustee Taylor. All in favor? Unanimous. The minutes of February 13th, 2018. Anybody have comments? No. no. Great. Motion. Uh, Trustee Rizzillo, second. Trustee Nell, all in favor? Okay. Reports. Why don't we start, uh, Trustee Nell, do you have anything that you'd like to? Chamber of Commerce meeting tomorrow, 6.30, Semball in Irvington. Be there. <laughs> be there or be Sweet. square. Mm -hmm. Anything and else? And volunteers. And volunteers. Always, always more volunteers. Yes. You click on that button on the website Excellent. and submit your form and resume <clears throat> to Miss Liz Draper. <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Lisa Brady and um, our schools um, here in Dubs Ferry with the way that they handled the lockdown today. Um, as, of course, our police department, I think that everyone uh, did a fantastic job. Um, I think that I find out before you email me. <laughs> so they kept us very informed and I'm, you know, grateful that it was just, you know, precaution and you know, we value very much the efforts of our uh, police uh, department, and I really, really want to give kudos to our um, district because I think that they handled the whole process very, very well and kept us very well informed. So thank you very much. Interesting. Uh, Trustee Taylor? Nothing for me. Trustee Taylor? Nothing for me. Uh, yeah, just a just quick so. traffic update, because uh, everybody's concerned about what's going on, what the village is doing. Um, there is a traffic study going on on Bellwood um, yes. this week, and we I, do I don't know whether it's this week. Well, well, it was supposed yeah. to be this week or next week or yeah. something, whatever. Uh, but it is happening, uh, and we do we are scheduling a meeting with the state DOT to discuss Broadway. So. Thank you, Tristan. Uh, uh, I want to also thank uh, our police chief and the police department, uh, not only uh, today for the situation that occurred up in Tarrytown, the lockdown, but we also, with the Route 9 initiative, we have asked uh, the chief to have our uh, police out in front of the high school and middle school, uh, both at the opening and at dismissal and especially with the events that occurred last week in Florida. Um, I think I've heard a lot from parents and I think they're very appreciative of that. We do have some events that are coming up. One is the Senior St. Patty's Day Lunch, which is March 
15. I don't know about they that. They have some great lunches. Mm -hmm. Be careful there, though. It gets a little, yeah. little dicey <laughs> in some of, those, yeah. some of those lunches. We also have the parade, Dobbs Ferry and the fire department, uh, police department leading the parade. But anybody that would like to march, we'd like anybody interested. It's March 11th. It's at 1.30. It kicks off in Tarrytown. It's a nice stretch of the legs down Broadway to, I think it's Beekman Avenue and Sleepy Hollow and um, down towards the uh, viewing stand in Sleepy Hollow. It's always a lot of fun and um, we usually get a good crowd every year. We have some events at the library. There's a baby meetup March 2nd. Wow. Really starting, <laughs> starting to be young. Wow. wow. Uh, March 2nd, 2018. And I think it's on, uh, uh, I think it's at 1015 a.m. So that sounds like an exciting event there at the library. <laughs> we also have a ta at the uh, library March events, Town and Gown, March 5th, 2018, 7 to 9. Colonel Brown, Thursday, March 15th, 1 to 2.30. A Wednesday matinee, March 20th, 1 to 3. And a cult classic movie night. Are you interested in that? Uh, the Crying Game. The Crying Game, yes. Wow. So uh, they have, they've started to have some really Did great Did anybody events. go to the comedy thing the other night? I, I heard it was make great. It. I, I wanted to go really bad. Yeah, a, a few people told me they went and it mm. was... Uh, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, um, I think that's it. Mayor, you... there's one thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Liz. Liz, yes. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I just, there were two issues I just wanted to discuss briefly. Um, the board had previously um, approved a couple dates for the Girl Scout troops to be at the train station. And um, I have been working with the um, Hudson Valley Girl Scout leaders, whatever. Um, and there were additional dates because they were actually going to be down there from March 9th through the 15th rather than just uh, the 12th and the 15th. So I just wanted to let everybody know the additional dates. And each of these dates is from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. is uh, Friday, March 9th, um, the originally approved um, Monday, uh, March 12th. Then again on Tuesday, March 13th, Wednesday, March 14th. Thursday, March 15th, and Friday, March 16th. So um, they will be down there, and they do have approval from uh, Metro North, so everything's okay there. Um, uh, the police department has been informed, so everybody is on board. Um, the other issue, um, last year, Town Supervisor Paul Feiner had sent out an email, um, and it was right around Halloween when he usually does this, um, to inform us that they had some reflective armbands. And um, I contacted uh, Mr. Feiner at that time and asked him where he got them from and if we can get some. So um, he gave me contact information with somebody from AAA. I in turn contacted them, got a couple, you know, it was a small group, but we only got about 50 of them. Um, but I, again, um, now working with you know, uh, Deputy Mayor Cassell, uh, former Mayor Kinnett, Ms. Delcado, a couple other people, um, and I contacted AAA again and was able to get another 100 free of charge. So they look like this. Oh, and the, yes, they are. So they slap around your arms. Nice. So uh, just to uh, <laughs> help our pedestrians be a little safer. Um, so Jennifer's good, I don't need snow. Um, <laughs> so uh, I do have them here at Village Hall if anybody wants them. You know, just come and, and ask me. We'd, due to the limited quantity, we would ask if you, you know, just one per person rather than one person coming in and asking for 50 of them. So, um, but from 8.30 to 4, Monday through Friday, stop by Village Hall. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks Thank Thanks, you. They caught the Harry Town shooter. Oh, oh that's good. great. Thank you, guys. Yay. That's great news. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>